everyone. Welcome to Be Our Guest, our weekly virtual happy hour with industry professionals. I'm Deb Janke. I'm the Artistic Director of Live and in Color. Uh, we are a not-for-profit theater company based in New York and Connecticut, and we develop new plays and musicals that promote and celebrate diversity. Uh, for more information, check out our website, theaterincolor.org. Uh, now it's time to grab your drink and start leaving questions for our guest in the comments. Please join me in welcoming the star of Broadway's Wonderland, In the Heights, Hal Prince's Prince of Broadway, and uh, from the first national tour of the band's visit, the amazing Janet DeCall. Hello, my love. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for having me. It's so wonderful to see you. Thank you for joining me. Likewise, thank you for having me. I just realized we're matching shirts. We are. We're totally matching. We're great. <laughs> um, where are you calling from? I am actually calling from a hotel in New York City where I'm currently quarantining. <laughs> <laughs> wow, but I know you've been spending most of you, but most of the quarantine you were uh, in Florida, right? Yes, I have uh, been in Orlando, Florida since March, uh, and it's been quite a change of pace uh, with everything going on. It's it's a it's a big big sort of a turnaround to be find myself in such a quiet <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> suburban life, which is not so bad actually. Well, I know um, when uh, when the pandemic hit, you were touring the country with the band's visit, playing Dina, um, which was so uh, exciting. Oh, there you are. Um, uh, when uh, COVID hit, um, what what city were you in? So we were in Pittsburgh, yeah, and uh, we had played one night in Pittsburgh oh, wow. on Wednesday night, and um, we got word on. I'm sorry, we played two nights, a Wednesday night, a Thursday night, and then we were waiting for the city to essentially shut down because talks of what, of everything had already started and we had sort of been slowly closing off to the public. Um, the city prior, uh, we weren't allowing, we were in St. Louis and they didn't let us see people backstage. Um, they were very adamant about us sort of staying in a bubble as much as we could can or could have at the time. And uh, we're basically just waiting for the mayor to be like all here closed. So we didn't know that our last night was gonna be our last night. <laughs> um, but I know that many of us were really starting to worry about what was going on, so. Yeah. yeah How long have you been touring when that happened? I started in January, so okay. a little over two months. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I mean, I was so looking forward to when you were get, coming back to the closer cities to get to see you in it. Um, Thank and you. Um, I'm sure you were having the time of your life doing oh it. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Well, hopefully, you know, the word is that the show will eventually come back when things resume in some capacity that is safe. Um, yeah. So we're hoping that at some point, we don't know when but that the yeah. show will sort of pick up the cities that it had planned to go to and find a sort of new route. Um, but yeah, I was having such an incredible time. I felt like I was just starting to sink my teeth into this very delicious, layered, beautiful character. And um, I was lucky enough, Sasan Bay, who did the, the movie and took over on Broadway was on tour with us. So that was just, to see him in front of my face every night was just incredible. He's incredibly brilliant and beautiful actor. Well, I, I can't wait to finally get to see you in that uh, someday soon, hopefully. Um, I want to start at the beginning. You were raised in Los Angeles. Yes. Um, and when did you first know you wanted to be a performer? Well, very early on, like my, my house was filled with music. I mean, yeah. my parents were Cuban. So music, food, and lots of loud people was the norm. And uh -huh. my parents played all kinds of music for us growing up. I was, the they had their Spanish Latin boleros and traditional Celia Cruz playing, traditional to me anyway. <laughs> and uh, you know, my, my brothers would play rock and hip hop and I was a musical theater jazz nerd. So there was like all kinds of music playing all the time. And 
you know, I was very lucky. My parents are both incredibly supportive. You know, their big thing was we left Cuba to make a life for our future. And we knew when we wanted to have kids that we wanted them to be able to follow their dreams because we couldn't. And so they were very adamant about us just pursuing the things that we love to do. And luckily I had their support from day one. That's amazing. And were you involved in theater when you were younger or were you just into the music? Yeah, no, I started dancing actually. I started as a dancer and uh, you know, started in little tiny private studios around town. I eventually ended up going to a performing arts high school as a dance major in California and then sort of, I always liked to sing that I knew and there was a pivotal time where I was like, oh, like I feel so much stronger in this other aspect. So I started developing my voice and you know, the thing that you kind of are not so great at, you kind of have to build that muscle and that's how yeah. um, I found myself in the theater where you get to do all three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which we love. Which we um, love. I, I, I know you worked in Gloria, uh, Gloria and Emilio Estefan's recording studio at a very young age. How, mm -hmm. how did you start working at the studio? I want to hear how that came about. Well, you know, the little angels in your life that kind of show up and guide you along the way. I actually was dating somebody in high school whose middle school drama teacher was married to the studio manager. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it happens. So, you know, he, uh, my ex, well, my, he ended up becoming my ex-husband, but at the time he started as an assistant in the studio and um, they ended up needing a receptionist where I came in and I would answer the phones, but secretly like want to be in the studio singing. And so there was incre this incredible stairwell with amazing acoustics. And whenever I would have to go upstairs, I would sing in this acoustic stairwell where it just, it would resonate around the whole building. And of course, being the musical theater nerd that I was, I would sing Rent and you know, <laughs> I'm singing Rent going up the stairs, talking about slitting my wrists in the bathroom. And the studio manager pulls me into his office and he's like, are you okay? Do we need to talk about something? <laughs> I hear you singing about slitting your wrists in the bathroom. That can't be too good. <laughs> So eventually I did make my way into the recording studio and I started singing background vocals for a lot of those artists that were crossing over from the Latin market to the American market. And it's when like Ricky Martin and Shakira and JLo and Mark Anthony and all these guys were making that transition. It was an incredible time to be there. Really I'm amazing. sure. I mean, you must've learned so much from doing that as well. Yeah, it was a, it was a school for sure. Can, are you, currently on any of the, the their hit recordings that we can pick out? Well, yeah, I mean, you can hear me singing background vocals for a couple of those, those artists, for sure. Another thing I would do in the studio was record the demos that they would hear to like pick the song. Wow. Yeah, so that was really fun, because, you know, it's like, oh. oh. I would hear those if you have recording of those one time. <laughs> those are some bootlegs. Those are in a, those, yes, those are in a vault somewhere. Yeah. I have no idea where those are. How how exciting! Um, it, it was and really then fun. You, after that, you, you I think you officially made the transition into theater, right? Did how did you end up in New York City? Yeah, so um, a friend of mine from high school had moved away to New York. He would come and student direct us as the older senior classmen. So um, my friend Henry Gainza, who ended up making his Broadway debut in On Your Feet. We have a group of friends from high school, all from Miami, who have gone on to have really amazing careers. And it's a, we have a beautiful group of friends. And so Henry had, was is older than me. He came to New York. He landed a, a gig called Four Guys Named Jose and Una Mujer Named oh, yeah. Maria that I was off that. Broadway. Yeah. yeah. And so they ended up bringing the show down to Miami and they lost their leading lady. And I hadn't spoken to Henry in a couple of years because he had gone away. I was working at the studio at the time. He called me and he's like, hey, I don't know if you're still doing theater, but we've lost our leading lady. Would you be interested in auditioning for this thing? And I was like, sure, why not? So I went, I got it. The theater bug bit hard. 
And I was like, <laughs> oh, right, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And so that, Henry was in New York. Uh, he introduced me to Lin-Manuel Miranda while he was, he was in the first reading of Lin's musical to be, big musical hit to be in the Heights. And I came in and there were just a number of us Latin actors at the time. And uh -huh. uh, I came in and he introduced me to Lynn and I was part of the second reading and with the show from then on. And you know, one thing just kind of leads to the next to the next. Well, before we get to In the Heights, I know your very first Broadway show was Good Vibrations, right? Yes. I actually was at the very first preview of that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> the beach balls. Oh, the beach balls. Those <laughs> infamous beach balls. <laughs> what was that experience like being in that show? You know, it's, when you look back at it, that cast is so insane. Like. So many people have come out of that cast. Titus Burgess, um, Kate Rinders, uh, Krista Rodriguez, Chad Kimball, I mean, Milena Govich. It just goes on and on and on. So, so many of us were making our Broadway debuts and we were so young and so green and so excited to be there. And so they'd be like, throw a beach ball and be like, yeah, we're gonna throw the beach ball. It was crazy. It was so much fun and um you know we had some some upperclassmen who had been in other shows who were like you know this is an interesting process <laughs> this is an interesting process and so you know you just it's your first and you're bright eyed and bushy tailed and it's magical and so really that's what i remember it just being such a joyful exciting time and I have never done more sit-ups in my life. <laughs> you know, we were in bikinis in the we middle of winter. The whole time, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> On our 15-minute breaks in rehearsal, all the girls would just like drop and do 100 crunches. It was nuts. <laughs> well, so in the Heights, um, what was being part of the development of that show like? Because you were there from early on. Yeah, I was there from, again, like almost, I think it was the second reading that Lynn did. And you know, just being lucky enough to be a part of that whole process was really life changing, you know, because I think what 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 I hold on to the most is from those early days that we all knew that it was something very special and that the music was unlike anything anybody had heard before. So that it was a feeling more than a like, oh, we know for sure that this is gonna be a thing. We would yeah. leave there with feeling uh, that it was so special and we just couldn't wait to come back to the next version or iteration of what it would be. And so, I mean, that was literally it. We would get together, work on it for a week and then be devastated that we didn't know when we were gonna see each other again and then come back and it'd be the same thing, so much fun and the show would change and morph and it found its clarity and it found its characters and it found its way and it was really, really beautiful. Uh, I feel it. very privileged to have gotten to see <laughs> several versions of it, of the workshop and then off Broadway. And then finally you guys were on Broadway and we have a little clip to show of you in the show. <laughs> that was the Tony Awards, right? That was the Tony Awards, yeah. I mean, the show was such a cultural game changer for Broadway. I mean, you spoke a little bit about it, but what's it like to be part of that legacy now? I mean, it's done everywhere. You have so many, several generations since looking up to the show, who want to do the show. I mean, talk yeah. a little bit about that. I mean, just my favorite is when I get DMs on Facebook or Instagram and I'm and you know it's a young aspiring actor who's like I'm playing Carla in my production of the Heights and I'm like she's my favorite character <laughs> it's the best it's the best and you know uh, it's what you're saying it, it made such an impact in the theater in our community and again we knew it was something special we didn't know 
the capacity that it would reach people and how it would change people and how would it affect their lives and how they would see themselves on stage. And But we knew it was, we were present enough during the process to know that it was something really magical. Yeah, it really was. Well, you know, it, it lives on and, and hopefully the movie is coming out soon and you know, it's just it's so exciting for, it really you is know, for, yeah. for another group of people uh, and around the world to be exposed to this story and this music is, it's really wonderful. Yeah. And, and timely. Uh, yeah, still, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, so you also starred in the fabulous musical Wonderland with music by Frank <laughs> Wildhorn, which you were also in from the very, very early stages. How was that developmental process different from In the Heights? I mean, for one thing, you were leading the show, it was all on you, but. <laughs> well, that was a big thing and it was a big learning curve for me. I mean, um, it was my first time stepping into a leading role. I had never had been called to sing so much in a show. I mean, the big number of the show is the last number of the show, so it was really, vocally a marathon for me, learning my instrument, what it was capable of doing, having it break down midway through <laughs> the developmental process and, and coming up against some real trials. You know, this for us as singers is the most, it's the most vulnerable part of us, our voice. And so when you find yourself up against a struggle like that and you don't know that there are, you know that there are others, but you don't know until you kind of come up against it yourself. And so I learned so much about not just my instrument and what it could and couldn't do, but also how to lead a company and that who I was set the tone for everything. So it really calls you to have to step into a space where, where you're your best, the best version of yourself. You know, and having people like Priscilla Lopez and Olga Meredith as an example, these pros who had done it and their disposition at work every day was the most joyful. It was such a wonderful example to have of who to be and how you should be. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Well, speaking of stars, you were one of the stars of Prince of Broadway, a musical review of some of Hal Prince's greatest hits. Um, what was it like working with the Broadway legend Hal on a, his last show, correct? It was his last yeah. show. It was, I mean, to be a part of that legacy, even in the most minimal way, it was, it's a dream come true. You know, this is yeah. a man who changed the face of American theater and he was till the very end, so fervent and so in love with the theater. And he would he would show up at the theater almost every day and announce himself on the PA. The prince is in the building, and so we knew he was there. <laughs> then he would take a six flight trip up to the women's dressing room at ninety one and sit there and share with us about his day and how we were, and you know, just so inspiring on all on every. Level. And nobody was more excited or gung ho or hungry to be there than him. So again, like you see, you see the ones that sort of the ones that lead us and how they are. And it's like, of course, this is what it takes. It takes yeah. that level of commitment, desire, passion to 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 be who you are. Yeah, no, incredible, incredible man. Um, I I was so excited to get to see you in the show and you got to perform some iconic pieces in the show from Kiss of the Spider Woman and Evita, there you are on the balcony. Yeah. How yeah. thrilling was it for you to follow in the footsteps of performers who created these roles, Cheetah Rivera and Patti Lapone? Oh my God. The scariest, <laughs> truly the scariest, you know, but you got to trust that you have what you need and, and you just show up and you do your version, the best version that you can. And um, yeah. I mean, absolutely daunting and intimidating, no, no doubt. I remember the first time I had to sing the song for Hal in front of the, in our rehearsal room as we were staging and I was a nervous wreck and he could tell. And so he yells to me, 
Janet, remember, you're a queen. <laughs> well, it's like, true. You, he was speaking right. the truth. Yes, he was, always, <laughs> always. Uh, but it was absolutely thrilling, so thrilling. I mean, those those songs are so iconic and they're, they're just so delicious to sing and they, they represent so much, you know, so mm -hmm. to be able to, to try them on for even a short while was really incredible. Well, you were brilliant in the show as you always are. And Thank you know, you. I'm your biggest fan. So I, I, I um, it was wonderful. Um, this past February, you released your debut album, My Standards. There you yeah. are. And in fact, I have, my copy right here that I love. And I'm sort of obsessed with this beautiful picture and this dress that's in it. You look Thank gorgeous. You. It's like, I wanna know where this dress came from. What's the- <laughs> I have a friend who is an incredible designer. His name is Gustavo Caril. He's a, a Spanish designer. Yeah. And um, when I told him what I was up to, he was like, come and try things on. And so he was very generous in loaning me that gorgeous gown. Um, and it was just so perfect for my concept and what I was hoping to sort of grab graphically and, and visually with, with ties to the, the genre. And the, yeah, it just worked so beautifully. Well, sp speak more about the album because it's incredible. I listen to it all the time. It's, it's so good to talk, talk yeah, about so it, it you. It's called My Standards. And it's my version of the American standards. And basically for me, that means that it's uh, the American standards with Cuban arrangements. Mm -hmm. And so I, this idea dawned on me, I wanna say it was almost five years ago. Uh, I was in LA and very hungry for creativity. And I met a friend who is a Cuban music aficionado like myself. And we started talking about Cuban music and all of the subgenres that exist within Cuban music. And, you know, it dawned on me that so many of these standards would very beautifully meld with the Cuban rhythms in, in different capacities. And so I shared my idea and we started playing with how we would arrange these songs. And I was like, oh my God, you're in my head. This is exactly what I hear. So it was a beautiful, uh, sort of communion in, in, in voicing what, what was going on in both of our heads. And um, yeah, it's, it's a true passion project for me. Honestly, it's a miracle. I feel like it's a miracle that it happened. It came together in a month. And I had musicians in Mexico, California, Miami, my niece recorded on there. She's in Australia. And it just very magically all came together right in time for me to put it out right before going on tour. And I'm so proud of it, and I'm just glad it exists. It's one of those those creative babies that you birth, and you're like, "Oh, it happened!" <laughs> well, congratulations! It's it's uh, it's so wonderful. And for those of you who don't have it yet, make sure you pick it up because it's it's just it's so wonderful. Um, Thank you. I also know you are a singing and acting coach. You have a whole online uh, business, pretty much. How, how yeah. does teaching influence you as a performer and vice versa? Oh, I feel like I'm at the best teaching when I'm in a show. I feel mm -hmm. like they just fuel each other so effortlessly. Or when I'm working with a different director, uh, you know, you take from all of these sort of funnels and, and, and funnel them into these kids or these other performers. And when you see them get it, it's, it's the most rewarding feeling. And so yeah. it's something that I'm truly, truly passionate about, especially during this time. I found that students are hungry for something that lights them up. And it's a wonderful way to give and receive. I just, I'm such, a, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm such an advocate of this platform, which honestly at the beginning was a little, people were skeptical about it, you know, but now yeah. that sort of everything has resorted to this way of learning, um, it's really become a wonderful tool for not only students independently, but for schools as well to be exposed to Broadway performers or Broadway creatives and learn about their jobs and what they do from the people who are actually doing it. So it's, it's really growing to become something really quite beautiful. 
Well, um, your students are very lucky to have you as a teacher. Oh, I'm, very well, I'm, I'm the luckiest. They really mm -hmm. are such a light in my life. They really truly are. Um, so our mission at Live and in Color is to provide opportunities for artists from diverse communities and backgrounds to create new stage works. What does having a, a diverse working environment mean to you? Honestly, I feel it's like the richest, it's the richest well, because people who come from different places have their own things to offer that, I, that in my own paradigm, I may not have been exposed to otherwise. So I think it is truly, truly, truly important to embrace and open up not only the stage, but, but creativity in any capacity to listen and learn mm -hmm. and try things on that you typically or normally wouldn't, something that maybe even scares you a little bit. And when you have a diverse background of people to sort of stream into this pool, it just, it's just, it feels like it's like an endless, again, an endless river of wealth that you yeah. can learn from, take from, try on. Maybe it's for you, maybe it's not for you, but just the exposure is something that's really, really special. Absolutely, that's so beautifully said. Um, I think we have a few questions from viewers. Do you have any pre-show rituals? Thank you, Alyssa. <laughs> Thank you, Alyssa. Uh, yeah, I think we all kind of do in some capacity. I know for me, you know, I I always have to warm up vocally to some extent to make sure that everything that I need is there. Um, um, and I do a little prayer to uh, sort of calm me. But my grandmother passed away very young. She wanted me to be a performer. Mm -hmm. And so in, in some divine way, I feel like she has sort of guided me on this journey from up yeah. above. And so I always just thank her and recognize her for, for that feeling of warmth and love that I, I feel her presence. And so um, in some capacity, a little bit of every performance is in gratitude to her. Oh, that's so lovely. Uh, let's see, is there one more? Oh. Uh, I, I look back and I love backstage gossip. Uh, I, any, did any onstage mishaps happen during In the Heights that you can share? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually this, this, uh, this wasn't backstage, this was actually onstage. Yeah. So I was covering for Vanessa and In the Heights and Sean Taylor Corbett was covering for Usnavi. So both of us, the two covers were on and it was a pretty, er, pretty early on in the run. And we were doing uh, one of the songs toward the end of the show, it's called Champagne. And the whole gist is that Usnavi is trying to open the champagne bottle and he can't. Well, in this performance, the champagne bottle popped and the cork went flying into the front row. <laughs> and, you know, we have our little super fans who lost their minds. And so here we are, both covers. Sean Taylor Corbett proceeds to improvise rap the rest of the song to reflect what's going on on stage at the moment. There's champagne all over the floor. It was a wackadoo. But we ended up getting through it. And the show went on as it was. <laughs> and from then on, they actually sealed the champagne cork with glue. <laughs> that would never oh. happen. <laughs> the, jo the, the joy of live theater. <laughs> joy of live theater. It's true. Let's, oh, one more question from Luis. Please. Is there a Latina pop figure that you would want to portray on stage or film? Ooh. Ooh, that's a good question. A Latina pop figure. Hmm. You know, I'd have to think about this one. There are some really incredible, like, old school Latin uh, singers that I would like to sort of sing like you do, like uh, Paloma San Basilio. These are like my mom's. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's artists of they're course. just the voices that i heard growing up you know so that would be really cool well that's that would be thrilling for your fans um 
We are out of time, which sadly, because I could talk all night. But before we go, I want to say how proud I am of Live and in Color and the work we do to foster diverse and inclusive environments. Uh, the stories we tell change hearts and minds. If you can, please consider donating to Live and in Color. Uh, go to theaterandcolor.org to support our work and our artists. And also please tune in to be our guest next week when I interview actress and comedian J. Elaine Marcos from Broadway's Annie, The Wedding Singer, Our Chorus Line, Miss Saigon, and Rent Live. Um, thank you, everyone who tuned in today. And thank you, my friend Janet, for joining me. Uh, will you lead us in a little toast before we say goodbye? Oh, yes. So hold your drinks up. A little toast. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for this uh, wonderful time together. I wish the very best for this organization and all of the wonderful things you're doing to create new work for people of color and diversity. Amen and thank you to you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Week. Thank you. <laughs>